Hi, everybody. Thank you uh, for joining the webinar today. We're really excited to have you all here. Um, we are going to get started, and I just wanted to do a quick housekeeping um, thing for you. So we have two different uh, functions within Zoom. We have the webinar chat, which we ask that you keep any technical um, difficulties or questions related to that in the chat function. And I also see people are starting to let uh, others know where they're from, which I think is, is great. Um, and we're going to ask that the Q&A portion of the that Q&A function be just strictly on uh, content questions for the webinar. Um, so with that, we're going to get started. We are very excited that you're here for uh, the kickoff webinar for cycle two for Pro Literacy's Learning Upgrade Challenge. Um, today with me, we have um, myself, Sarah Howell. I'm a senior project manager at Pro Literacy. My colleague, Todd Evans, who is our director of professional development at Pro Literacy is here. He's going to help me with the chat and questions. Uh, we also have Vinod Lobo from Learning Upgrade, who is the founder and CEO, and Drew Robinson from Learning Upgrade, who is our sales director. So I will let everybody take a second to just kind of introduce themselves um, before I turn it over quickly to Vinod. Yes, hi, uh, Vinod Lobo here uh, from Learning Upgrade. Very excited to uh, be with all of you today. Okay, Vinod, I think I think we can um, kind of get right into the to the webinar. Okay, wonderful. All right. So, so Drew, uh, Drew yeah, she's gonna stop sharing yep. the uh, there we go. Perfect. Okay, great. All right, so um, this is Vinod Lobo here. Uh, we are so excited because this Pro Literacy Learning Upgrade Challenge has finally finished its first semester four months. And when we looked at the data, it's just incredible. You'll see who the winners were. We're going to announce them. And uh, we're going to show you how you can join for the next uh, cycle of the challenge. Um, so what is the challenge for those of you new to it? Um, what we're trying to do is transform the lives of a million adult learners over the next uh, uh, two years. And so why have we created this challenge? As many of you know, we're part of the Adult Literacy X Prize competition. We're one of the grand prize winners. And we found out during that time that low literacy adults, um, only 5% of them are in adult ed. And we need to serve the other 95. We need to expand access and we need to help them help their children also and help them find employment. So the whole point of the challenge is to expand access to uh, our program, adult basic education, whether it's English, math, GED, digital literacy. So why smartphones? As, as you all know, especially during the current crisis, it's really important for learners to use at home time and for learners to use the devices that they have at home. Many of our learners don't have Wi-Fi, don't have laptops and computers, but they do have smartphones. If you can deliver adult basic education over a smartphone, then um, you can reach all students, not just um, the ones that have uh, a lot of resources. So we're going to go into the details of the Pro Literacy Challenge. Um, but I thought first what we're going to do is come back to Sarah and focus on who the winners are. Uh, for the first challenge. Thank you, Vinod. Um, okay, so we are going to or er, to announce the winners. So cycle one winners for the top program was Rockingham Community College. And um, Katie from Rockingham Community College provided us with a quote um, on their experience. And she said that our program has really enjoyed using Learning Upgrade. It has fit the learning needs of some students we serve that we did not feel like our other learning programs were helping. Um, so congratulations to Rockingham Community College for being our top program. 
Our top instructor is Sherilyn Suggs from Siena Literacy Center in Detroit, Michigan. And she said that we have seen the learners embrace Learning Upgrade app with motivation and determination like never before. Tutors are able to guide and support learners because they are able to see the challenges they're facing from moment to moment. It's a great program. And we also awarded students. So the top students, all students were from Rockingham Community College, but it's very interesting. We have three different winners. Um, we awarded prizes for the top student in hours completed, lessons completed, and certificates completed. Um, so April Apple won for top hours. Lise Chavez won for top number of lessons completed. And student three, who we did not receive permission from that student um, to share their name, received top certificate. Um, completed. So that to us was really exciting to see because we weren't sure if we were going to see the same student complete um, the most number of hours, lessons, and certificates or if we would see three different students. So I think it's really important for people that are in this competition to continue to encourage their students to, to just really utilize the app because um, you know, we, we are going to give three different students their choice of a Southwest uh, airline voucher or a $200 visa gift card. Um, so that's really, really exciting for us to see. And then um, for the, for the Pro Literacy Learning Upgrade Challenge, if you would like to join, there's a link um, on this page and it takes you to a landing page on Pro Literacy's website. And at the bottom of the page, there's a form for you to join the challenge. Um, if you're a new user and you've never um, use Learning Upgrade, you can request a trial and that trial will last you the length of the challenge. Um, and Drew and New Readers Press will work on getting you set up and getting all of the information out to you. And if you're an existing user and you've purchased Learning Upgrade, um, you know, they're just list that you're an existing user and you'll be put into the challenge. So um, with that, I will turn it back over to Drew. All right, thank you. I mean, it's just incredible to see the number of hours that were put in by some of those learners and then to see, you know, the top programs, the lessons, hours, certificates. It's been an interesting time. You know, we launched this very first semester of the challenge and just as we were starting to get into the swing of things, um, a lot of instructors and programs had their entire world turned upside down and so I want to step back, you know, for those of you that, that aren't familiar with how the challenge works um, and just briefly cover um, the structure of it, um, how your program can get involved. For those of you that have used it um, in the first term, um, you know, for those that were active, how you can apply for the mobile learning fund if you don't have funds right now. Um, we're going to introduce our newest course, Digital Literacy, which is available for everyone. Um, but most importantly, we're going to do this through the lens of remote learning. And so, uh, you know, some states are starting to open up a little bit, um, but for education, classrooms, literacy centers, um, you know, that's not included in a lot of those reopening programs. So really fall is the earliest we're looking um, to be back with students in a classroom setting. We're not sure what that's going to look like. And so, you know, we've, you know, included, uh, I think we have, you know, over, you know, close to 400 brand new adult ed providers that have joined us since mid-March when school shut down. Um, we've had hundreds and, you know, we're, I think, close to maybe a thousand um, instructors. We have thousands of brand new students that are using Learning Upgrade every day. So I want to make sure you know, we're going to support you in the classroom. We're going to support you in a remote setting, um, whatever our new reality is, Learning Upgrade is going to be a partner um, that's going to be able, um, you know, to be uh, whatever you need it to be. So, you know, let me step back here and so, you know, how does the challenge work? So, as Vinod mentioned, you know, we learned a lot from, you know, taking part in the X Prize. So, the X Prize uh, for the Adult Literacy X Prize said, you know, we want to see if a company or a team can create an app that'll have measurable gains. Uh, for adult learners and literacy. So we were the co-grand prize winners of that. And after we were the winners, then they had something they called the communities competition. And the communities competition is, okay, you guys won. Now let's make your app um, available in adult ed for a three month period and see what happens. 
And so it was, you know, something that we learned a lot from. There were a lot of positives, a few negatives with deployment. So we came up with this idea of a challenge that would go on forever, you know, not just a three month period. We wanted to make sure that this, uh, you know, our learning up great app, but also the ability to take part in this would be available for your programs when you're ready. So it starts out with these challenges. So this is the pro literacy challenge and the challenge works by having providers. Um, so adult ed providers in that challenge, the learners, they're the ones that are going to be completing lessons and hours on the learning upgrade app. And then we're going to be able to provide rewards um, just like Sarah was talking about earlier for the highest achieving providers and learners. So it's all based around, you know, this semester cycle. So we just finished our first one that went from January and ended on April 30. Uh, on May 1st, you know, this is our first week of the new semester cycle. And so we're excited to get, a, you know, everybody onboarded. For those of you that have learning upgrade licenses, um, and so those ones are not on the cycle, let's say you have an academic, you know, a calendar year license, um, you can take part in these. For any of you that are brand new, haven't used learning upgrade before, um, or you used it a few years ago, um, then you can take part in this semester challenge. And then for those of you that used it in the previous cycle, um, then we have an opportunity um, to continue with a paid license. And for those of you without funds, you can apply to the mobile learning fund uh, and get funds that way to continue. So again, the first semester um, ended, that was our very first semester in the learning upgrade challenge, very successful. And now we're looking to build on that for this second semester. So Sarah covered those winners. And again, we were just excited to see the hours, the lessons that were completed for all those learners. Um, and it's incredible to have that option between the Southwest voucher with travel shut down. Um, you know, maybe that'll become more popular in the future, but right now those Visa gift cards, I'm sure are gonna be very appealing. So for those of you that aren't familiar and are new for this semester cycle, I just wanna briefly cover the Learning Upgrade app. So, you know, before it was 21 courses, we just released our newest course, Digital Literacy. It's been very popular. You know, we're sh pretty shocked every day to see the number of, um, you know, learners that are adding that course and teachers adding that course to their student accounts. We cover reading, writing, and math as well. Everything's aligned to the adult CCRS standards. Um, we have full lesson list for you to view. We'll be able to share links to that, um, alignments for um, CASAS and TABE. And so we'll be able to share those as well. We're not gonna do a deep dive on learning upgrade today or digital literacy. We have recordings of webinars we've done on those in the past. I just wanna briefly cover this for those of you that are new. Learning upgrade is available everywhere. So in class, um, at home, and uh, you know, on site. So that in class and on site, again, for almost everyone right now is not a possibility. Um, we're seeing the vast majority of our hours taking place at home on personal devices, um, you know, surprisingly, you know, we used to think that it was 80% um, mobile, 20% um, desktop for our users when they were at home, but we're actually seeing about half of the hours taking place on computers and then a quarter on iOS, a quarter on Android. And the key here is there's continuous assessment reports for all instructors so that you can track and monitor all your student activity while they're working remotely. So this is what the Learning Upgrade app looks like for a student. The student logs in and they're gonna see the 22 courses available. So you'll see our English, our math, and then you'll see our skill courses at the bottom. We have our GED and high set, reading and comp, and then over there at the right, we have digital literacy. 22 courses, every single course has 60 lessons. So the way it works is your learner gets started uh, when they create their account, they can directly enroll into one of these courses, or they can take a learning upgrade placement. After a quick English or math assessment, we'll directly enroll them into the appropriate course. So we show them all the courses here. This is important. They can see the path ahead. So for a lot of our learners in adult ed, you know, sometimes we're working with pre-literate adults. Um, we have uh, some that are, you know, they've passed the language arts and the science part of um, the GED. And it's, you know, they just can't, can't get past the math. And so a lot of them, you know, maybe it was a family situation in junior high, could have been even earlier than that. They have to go back and work on the foundations. So what makes learning upgrade, uh, you know, so special and you know, why it's so popular 
is that your learners don't have to log into multiple accounts. Um, you know, they can have learning upgrade, they can work on their English, their math, and now they can also polish up on their digital literacy skills. And a preliterate can start with that English K, English 1, and work all the way up to NRS 5 to prepare themselves for that language arts test. Same with the math, even if they have to go all the way back to math K or 1, they can work all the way up. It's a lot of time spent um, until they get to algebra. And we have a lot of uh, you know, stories we can tell about learners that we've had in adult ed that have done exactly that. You know, they started out, hey, I need to pass high set math. They start with high set math, realize it's a little difficult. So they can go back and work on those foundational skills in math six, seven, eight, work their way up, take high set math and learning upgrade. And uh, you know, we've seen some, some really incredible turnaround stories from some adults um, that have failed it three or four times. And then after learning upgrade are able to go pass it and take that next step in their life. So you'll see at the top binge learning, you know, you see all these courses, but binge learning is really why we do this. And so similar to Netflix, uh, you know, YouTube, um, being able to see the content, the commitment from a content creator is really important. You know, if you go to someone's YouTube channel and they have one video, you open up a TV show on Netflix and there's only one season, it's hard psychologically to buy into that. If you don't know that there's gonna be more content to come when you're most hungry and eager to learn. So we display all of our courses here so that when those learners log in and they start out on Math 3, they know they don't have to jump to another app, um, a workbook, a worksheet to continue their path to success. They get to see everything ahead of them. And that's really the core of binge learning. So let's take a look at one of our courses. So here we have English Upgrade 5. And so this is what every single one of our 22 courses is gonna look like. You'll see the course screen and you'll see all 60 lessons here. So one through 59 are our content courses. 60 is the final challenge. Lesson 60 is the only timed uh, lesson in the entire course. And it's a cumulative test of everything they've learned on one through 59. So learners are gonna start out on lesson one and everything starts out with instruction. You know, we keep learners engaged. That's really the core of learning upgrade, songs, video, um, you know, animation. And so the instruction starts that way. And then your learners are gonna answer questions. They need 100 points in each lesson to move on from one to the next. And they need to um, earn those 100 points with 75% or better. So 75% is gonna be a bronze. Once they get to 90%, that's a silver. And if they get 95 or better, that's gonna be a gold. So you'll see here our learner has earned gold, 95 or better on every lesson. So now they've earned a gold certificate. If they were to have a few silvers left, a voice would come on, say, okay, you know, congratulations, you've earned a silver certificate. Let's go back and repeat those lessons to mastery, move them up to gold and earn that gold certificate. Again, everything is tied into binge learning. So once your learner earns that silver certificate, so everything 90% or better, we're gonna automatically enroll them in the next course and they can continue on their path to success. For those of you that are interested, we're not gonna to dive too deep into our courses, um, but we can share some links um, to our placement tables. So I mentioned when your learners get started, they self-enroll in this new remote environment. Um, I'll be showing you exactly how that's done with our platform at the end. Um, but you can have your learners directly, directly enroll based on previous tests. Um, and you can also take a look at our lesson list if you want them working on specific content. So I mentioned learners start out at lesson one. They work one at a time all the way to lesson 60. As an instructor, you have the option to unlock an entire course. So if you wanna assign certain lessons within a course, you do have the flexibility to do that. Um, all you need to do is unlock a course and then you can assign lessons using our lesson lists. Um, we also have our CCRS alignment. So again, if you want your, um, you know, your learners working on a standard, you can unlock the entire course and then say, okay, let's focus on Anchor 2, Central Message and Theme. And then you see all of the lessons in English Upgrade 4. We have one of these for each of our courses that are gonna cover that topic. So you have a lot of flexibility. Um, in this remote setting, we tend to have our learners just working self-paced, self-guided. Um, you know, we don't have time in a classroom and we have limited time 
on the phone or you know via webinars to interact with our learners so a lot of them are just working one at a time but if you do have a setup where you can talk to them meet with them text or call and assign lessons you do have that flexibility once we get into a classroom setting uh, in a computer lab um, where we're working one-on-one -on -one with tutors um, this is going to uh, probably be a bigger part of your program's usage so learner engagement you know i mentioned this is really what separates us from uh, you know a, a workbook a textbook um, especially in this remote learning setting so everything starts out with what you see on the left every single lesson has the instruction um, in the form of a song with video animation so we teach that way after the instruction now we're going to answer questions and that's what you see on the right so this example is volume of a rectangular prism you'll see our prism here you have the formula and you'll see uh, what I talked about at the, I mean, how you move from one to the next. So right now we have zero points. And in that uh, box below, we're gonna show you the increments. So for easier questions, you could earn three or five points. For more complicated, um, you, you could be getting 10 to 15 points. Um, if you're you know, starting on foundations and you're working on the alphabet, you might just be clicking and identifying a capital versus a lowercase, that could be two points. Then we're gonna show you the percentage in the gray um, circle there. And that's how you know, okay, here, I'm at 75%, 90, 95. It'll display in red if you're below that 75 to let you know you need to increase your percentage to move from one to the next. Now, what you'll notice in this animation here is, you know, I'm intentionally getting it wrong. And that way you can see what happens when your learner answers something incorrectly. You know, you don't have that time one-on-one -on -one as a tutor. You don't have them in class. So if you're using a workbook, worksheets, some other form of online instruction and assessment, it's really difficult for your learners to find out how to do something the correct way if they're answering it incorrectly. You know, and everybody's experienced this when, you know, back in math class, you have to do, you know, two through 40, and you might get the answers to the odd or even questions in the back of the book. And very rarely did they actually show you how they work something out. It's just the answer. You didn't get it right. So as a student, that can be really difficult, very frustrating when you don't have the opportunity for office hours to work with your teacher, your tutor one on one and be shown how to do that. So learning upgrades able to step in and do that for you. We walk your learner through every step. We want them to understand the formula where the numbers are coming from. So we have a voice come on. We use colors, green for the correct, red for incorrect. We have arrows, drag and drop to show you. And then we're gonna populate that formula for them. And that way they can see exactly where they went wrong and how to do it correctly. Learning Upgrade is available everywhere. So if your learners have smartphones, tablets, or computers at home, they'll be able to self-enroll and uh, you know, begin their path to success. And then through the Learning Upgrade LMS, what you'll be able to do is sit back at home, track and monitor all your student activity, see who's being, um, you know, having success with certain lessons, see if your learners might be struggling a little bit. I'm gonna show you more of that in a bit, but right now I'm gonna hand it off to Vinod um, to step back and tell you a little bit more about digital literacy. For those of you that have attended webinars in the past, um, you've heard about our English and math, but probably not about our digital literacy. So I'm gonna have Vinod introduce our new course here and talk about how it fits into the bigger learning upgrade package. Thank you, Drew. Um, digital literacy we've been working on for two years. It's the course that more people have asked for than anything else that we've ever done. Um, as all of you know, I mean, there's reading and there's writing and there's math, but then what about digital literacy? What about being able to use technology, uh, whether it's in a workplace or at school? What about being able to create content, for example, videos, documents, uh, images, uh, to understand devices, mobile data, to communicate with email and text, direct messaging, social media, to understand security and privacy, um, and then to be good digital uh, citizens, citizens um, and to be able to do uh, uh, good over the internet, for example. So what we decided to do is create a 60 lesson course and it's within learning upgrades. So it's not separate. Any of your students 
who have a license for learning upgrade, you can add digital literacy for them, um, or they can add digital literacy on their own if they're self-enrolled. Um, it's a brand new course, and anyone who has learning upgrade has digital literacy. Um, it's included along with English and math. So what's different about this course? Well, first of all, it's very high interest and very engaging, meaning uh, songs and uh, games and interaction. Secondly, a lot of practice. They go back and forth, a lot of remediation. Um, extensive mobile and smartphone learning. So, you know, the world's changed from the old days of we're going to teach them how to use a mouse and a desktop and Microsoft Word. So we're teaching also the new cloud and mobile um, ways of doing things. Um, also, we're aligned to ISTE and North Star standards. I'll show you that real uh, quickly later. But many of you um, are working with North Star assessments or with the ISTE, ISTE standards um, for digital literacy. Um, and it's integrated into our platform. So basically, you could assign someone an ESL course or a math course or a GED course, and then also uh, a digital literacy course, and they can do more than one course at the same time. All right, so um, let's get into uh, what these lessons are covering. So you see here the 60 lessons, um, and I won't go into them all, but I wanted to give you an idea. In the beginning, we're teaching basics of computers and phones and networks and app stores, how to do searches, things like that. Then later we get into data. So they're going to understand files and folders and cloud storage and storing it on SD cards, what a PowerPoint file is, what a uh, JPEG is. Then they get into creation. They're going to create documents and be able to edit photos and videos and, and do uh, understand what computer coding is. They'll get into email, text messaging. Um, they'll understand net etiquette. How should you behave online? Um, how should you treat other people? Um, then, of course, security, things like passwords, dealing with strangers and scams online. Um, and finally, we get into digital citizenship. They're going to understand social awareness or advocacy, what the digital economy is. And uh, things like voice assistance, Alexa, artificial intelligence, and virtual reality. So as you can see, we cover a lot of material. We cover pretty much all of the digital uh, literacy standards. And a student going through this in a, a matter of uh, 20 or 30 hours is going to cover it all. This is the ISTE standards, if you haven't seen them before. They're more general, things like dig digital citizenship or privacy or security. Um, then we also cover the North Star standards, which are more nitty gritty, like uh, how do you use Microsoft Word to save a file or uh, how, how do you, you know, turn on your computer, that kind of standards. Okay. Um, we're going to give you a quick demo. This is lesson 19, which is documents. So uh, let's do a quick demo of that. Word processing programs such as Google Docs or Microsoft Word allow users to create a digital file called a document or doc file. Documents contain text and images. Some examples are essays, flyers, or reports. Let's process some word processing basics. To create a new document, first choose file new. Type in the file name, the next thing to do. Let's look at the ribbon from left to right. Undo your changes, redo them to right. Change the font to make your text look good. Font size changes the letter size as it should. Select the answer. Perfect. Answer this question. 
Not quite. In the line spacing drop down, select double. What about this one? Incredible! Follow the instructions. Wrong. In the insert menu, go to image and select the picture of the book. Try this one. Sorry. To undo the last action, just click the undo arrow icon. All right, so that was a quick demo of uh, documents for digital literacy. And now I wanna jump into how you can get started as a provider for this new challenge cycle. So um, first and foremost, what you can do is go to proliteracy.org, click on what we do, and under programs and projects, you'll see the first option there is the learning upgrade challenge. We've also shared a link for that in the chat and in the follow-up to this webinar, the email that goes out to everybody, we can provide a link for that sign up as well. Um, so if you wanna sign up right now, you can click that link um, or you can go to proliteracy.org. Again, click on programs and projects, then learning upgrade challenge and you'll be able to get started. So once you filled out that form, um, you know, we'll receive um, the info and then we'll be able to respond with your getting started email. And so in that getting started email, our goal is to make sure that you have basic training. Um, we're also going to cover that today. Um, and the focus on that is number one is student onboarding. That's the second step after training, motivating and tracking students. So logging into the LMS and then four, celebrating student success. So we have our internal certificates, but as you saw at the beginning, all of your learners um, that you know, log a high number of hours, lessons, and earn those certificates um, can also earn additional prizes. So those Visa gift cards and Southwest vouchers. So number four with the challenge has become much more than it used to be just on its own, which was big. Learners love you know, getting those certificates printed off or emailed, um, but now with that added motivation of the gift cards and vouchers. So getting started, you're gonna receive an email. It'll look just like this. It'll have your name, um, your challenge uh, pilot is approved, and the very first block up there is gonna be student self-enrollment. So again, this is geared towards our remote learning reality today, which is how can I as an instructor, without any interaction with my students, no ability to meet in a classroom, get them enrolled, get them active, and then still track them from home and motivate them um, without ever being able to meet. And so this email is gonna walk you through exactly how you can do that. Um, I also wanna cover it in this presentation today, just so you can see what it looks like live before you take a look at this email on your own. So you'll know exactly you know, where to click, what to do when you get started. So in that uh, student self-enrollment, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is click that class code sheet link. You'll see it's the third line. Um, you're gonna see your class code at the top. And this class code is what your learners are gonna use to directly self-enroll into your classes. So you'll see for this example, it's 5435672. You can click that link for class code sheet and a page is gonna pull up and you're gonna have a code in there. And this is gonna be again, unique to each site. And so for this one, it's 4701260. Um, for each teacher, you're going to have your own class code. This is what your students are going to use to self-enroll into your class. So you can toggle this into English or Spanish. You can also, you know, if you're viewing it on a mobile device, you can do a screenshot and then you can text or email it to students, upload it to, you know, Google Classrooms or whatever it is you're currently using um, to interact with the learners in your class. Um, or you can click print and then save it as a PDF, and then email that out to all of your learners. So on this student guide, again, we have the class code, but then we also have instructions on how your learners get started. So step one is download the Learning Upgrade app. It's available in the Play Store, it's available in the App Store for Apple devices, and then it's also available on the web. So you can go to learningupgrade.com, click Login, and then there's a Student App Login button. So your learners have those three options, um, download it on 
an Android device, download it on an Apple device, or um, open the app from the web. Once they do that, this is the first screen they're gonna see. It's very simple, just an orange button for get started. They're gonna click get started, and then they can choose to start out on English, math, or digital literacy. They can always add more courses later. We don't limit that. They have access to all 22. Um, for this example, we're gonna do digital literacy just because it's our newest one. They're gonna enter their first name, last name, and then you'll see here on the right class code. So this is important, 4701260 from my uh, teacher provided self-enrollment guide. I'm now gonna add that seven digit class code into this class code field. So that's the bare minimum. Optional is student ID, email, or phone number. Your learners can add that in. Um, but the required fields here are gonna be first name, last name, and then class code to make sure I'm directly enrolling into my teacher's class. After that, the app is gonna show your, your uh, learners their username, password, and school ID. Now this is important for those that are gonna be logging in on multiple devices. Maybe they share a tablet or a phone, then they also have a Chromebook. And so by you know, this username, password, and school ID, they can take a screenshot, they can write it down, and then they'll be able to log in on any web-enabled device and pick up right where they left off on another device. They'll click go. Now they're gonna see their active course. So in this one, we directly enrolled into digital literacy. If I wanna say, you know, add, I wanna do algebra as well, I can click on any one of these grayed out icons in the app, I'll see the course map, and then there'll be an orange button that says add course. So I can add an English, I can add a math, I can add digital literacy, um, you know, I can pick up wherever I, you know, wanna learn. So that's just how quick and easy it is for your learners to get started. Again, you know, we started this process with the XPRIZE. For them, you know, we said, hey, you know, we have to onboard 10,000 learners into a field test. We have to make sure that this process is quick and easy. It's really paid off because now for remote learning, as I've mentioned, we've added hundreds of adult ed providers and thousands of students over the last month and a half. And for the, you know, them to be able to get started quick and easy, without any interaction with their instructors has been really important for a lot of the activity that we're seeing. So our learners create their accounts, they see their courses, they launch digital literacy, and they're completing lessons. Now as an instructor, I wanna log in to the LMS and track this activity. So in this email that I showed you, the first thing we looked at was the student self-enrollment at the top. The second block is tracking class and student activity. So we go through this step-by-step step as well. So number one, signing in. So you visit learningupgrade.com, you click login, and in the teacher login um, fields, you're gonna have your own username, password, and school ID. This is just for you as an instructor. You log in and you're gonna see the teacher menu. And then below in step number two, I walk you through every single one of the most important reports that you're gonna wanna utilize. So our, our teacher menu is broken down into five tabs. We have students, courses, teachers, classes, and reports. So you'll see that in each one of these uh, you know, little helper tips here, I start out with the tab. So you know, in the students tab, so by default, you always start in the students tab, but you can also click to the courses tab. So for number three, it says in the courses tab, and that way it really helps you quickly find what it is you need. So the first one is in the students tab, tab, click on the student monitor. So the student monitor is our most important um, report for how you can track your class in real time. So you'll see here we abbreviate the courses that your learners are enrolled in. In this case, it's English 1. As you learned earlier, every learning upgrade course has 60 lessons. So we show them from left to right. Each one of these tiles is going to represent a lesson. So if they got a gold, 95% or better, it'll display as gold. If they got a silver, 90 to 94%, you'll see silver. Bronze, 75 to 89. What's important and what you wanna focus in on is if you see red. Red means that they didn't get above that 75%. So when this is live, you can hover over any one of the tiles. You can see the name of the lesson, you can see the score that your learner got, and the number of times they played. So that's really important for these red, because you might hover over a red, and it'll say they played it one time, they got a 73%, and in that case, okay, they're gonna move on 
try it again, no problem at all. What you want to keep an eye out for is if you see a learner that's attempted a lesson multiple times and still has a low score. So as it says, hey, they've tried it five times, their high score is a 49, that's an opportunity to you know, reach out. Email, phone call, text, um, you know, any way you're able to get in touch with your learners um, in this you know, current situation, I mean, that's an opportunity to, to reach out to them. A lot of our instructors are utilizing Zoom, the platform we're on now. You can send a quick link to your learner. They can pull it up on a phone, tablet, or a computer, just like Learning Upgrade. And then you as an instructor can open your laptop and you can you know, demo a lesson live. So that's one way you can identify a problem and address it. Number two is if you see a learner that has a lot of bronze and is not keeping up with their peers. So if you see third from the top, that one, they're not completing a lot of lessons, but a lot of them are gold. So that's just a time on task issue. You know, I look at these reports daily. I can identify just by looking at them what it is. That's time on task. They're getting gold. They're just not completing enough lessons. Third from the bottom, I'm seeing a lot of bronze. So not only are they not completing enough lessons, when they are completing those lessons, they're just barely getting by. So in this situation, if I see, hey, they're in English one, they're struggling, and they're actually putting a lot of time in, there's multiple attempts for each lesson, let me have a conversation. Maybe I'm going to directly enroll them into English K. Um, this is really important for math. I might see someone on math five struggling, and I look at that report and I say, hey, it's, it's really fractions that they're struggling on. Let me go back to an earlier learning upgrade course and have them focus on those foundation levels. So, um, so that's important, you know, student monitor, number one, check for red. Number two, look for bronze and students that are falling behind. So the next one is, you know, in the students tab, we're gonna click the print passwords button to retrieve student logins. So I showed you that when your learners log in um, and create their account for the very first time, we show them their username, password, and school ID. Every now and again, a learner forgets this, they lose it, they are on a prepaid phone and they had to get a new one. Happens all the time. So as an instructor, you log in, click the print passwords button, you're gonna see a list of every one of your learner's login credentials. So that's an easy one. Number three is in the courses tab, every single one of your student courses has a report button. So individualized course reports are very important. So if you're in the student monitor and you say, hey, English upgrade one for third from bottom struggling, you can pull up an individualized course reports to take a deep dive there. So for this example, this is digital literacy. But the format here is the same for all of our courses. So you'll see at the top, we give subject area scores. So you can see how they're doing on content areas. Vinod broke down all 60 lessons, but we wanna give you subject area scores. Um, this really helps in the English and math as well. So you can see you know, if fractions is the problem, decimals, um, and identify those areas before diving in more. So those are the subject area scores at the top. You can see the initial score versus the high score. So you can see where they're making the highest gains. Where I have teachers focus on the most here is the graph, the student level scores. Orange is the high score, blue is the initial score. So you can see where a learner may be scored low on their first attempt and then made progress. You can hover over any one of those data points and again, get data on exactly how they're doing. Times played, uh, you know, average scores, name of the lessons. We show you the lessons at the bottom. Quick hand on this one is look for any valleys that haven't been filled in. So we'll see these valleys, 19 documents. First one, didn't finish, got a zero. They attempted it again and were 90. If you see valleys that haven't been filled in, maybe they got a 75, 76, 77, moved on and did that for a few in a row, you can quickly identify that in the graph and then continue scrolling down to the table below. You'll see if you keep scrolling, there's the table. This is a close up and in the table, you can get a deep dive. So again, quick hand on this one is focus on times played and minutes played. That is a very quick and easy way to identify areas where you can, you know, if you have some one-on-one -on -one tutor time via Zoom or another platform, or to have a phone call, walk your learners through something. You'll see here for phone basics, it took five attempts, spent almost an hour, but the learner on their own, you know, we have a lot of great internal instruction. So we can work that learner from a 71 up to 95. And we see this a lot. What you wanna keep an eye out for again, is if you see, hey, 
they have a high score of 71, they can't get past phone basics, they've played it 10 times and they've spent an hour, that's an opportunity to work, uh, you know, reach out, work with them on it. And then you also have the option to log into your account and move that learner ahead. Say, hey, let's skip ahead to four, let's skip ahead to another lesson, and you can come back and work on that one later. In the email, we also, uh, you know, in the reports tab, you can see the student uh, pacing guide and tracking guides. So this is the student progress report by date. It's our most popular report in our reports tab. The reason for that is you can select a start and an end date. This is important if you want to track, um, you know, your hours for the challenge. You can say, hey, May 1st until July 31st, and we'll show you all the activity and time on task for your learners in that time period. It's also important for those of you that need to report hours. So if you're reporting hours, um, you can use this report, set a start and an end date. We're gonna by default show you their time on task for every single one of the courses. You can also do all by student and we'll sum everything up for you. So if your learners are in four or five courses, we'll sum it all up and give you the total for exactly how much time is being spent by that student on all of learning upgrade in the time parameters that you set. You can click on any one of those hours played links. You'll see those are links, the numbers, and we'll give you detailed session data on how they spent that time. So if you click 39.6, you'll click it. We're gonna show you every single session that took place in that 39.6 hours. You get the session start time, end time, the lesson played, the number of minutes played, and the device that was used to access uh, for that session. You can also do that for an entire class or an entire site. You can uh, you know, get a student session report for your class with subtotals. So again, you'll see the start and the end time for every session, number of times played, score, course, lesson, and then the device at the end there. And this is really important to track when your learners are working in this new remote setting. Um, you know, not surprisingly, or maybe surprisingly for some of you, um, you know, Learning Upgrade is an app that's available 24 seven, and our learners really take advantage of that. So we're really starting to compete with that infinite scroll on Facebook and Instagram, and our learners are logging a ton of time from that 10 p.m. to 3 or 4 a.m. even. Um, they're learning in bed, at home, um, you know, when it fits into their schedule. And so you can really take a look at all that in your student session time report. And again, you know, it's an opportunity to reach out and congratulate your learners when they're making progress, um, you know, in a diff difficult time here. And then celebrating student success. Again, we had those winners for the first cycle semester, and now we're getting ready. You know, this is the first week of the second, and at the end of this second semester cycle, um, we'll be, you know, having all those same rewards available um, for this time period. Again, I encourage all of you to go to the Pro Literacy website, click on what we do, programs and projects, get signed up now so that we can get you started early, get you started this week, and your learners will have you know, the highest uh, you know, chance of getting those high hours, lessons, and certificates to win prizes. You as an instructor can win, and then also your entire program can win. I'm not gonna go into it today, but for those of you that have multiple teachers, this is something that some of our bigger programs have utilized. We do have admin reports as well. So if you're a director, a coordinator, you say, hey, I have 10 teachers that I'd like to utilize this for their um, you know, students, can I track them? Absolutely. We have admin accounts, you can log in and look at top-down data, see how all of your teachers are doing, see how much activity is in each class, and pull reports that way. Um, you can reach out to me directly, drew at learningupgrade.com if you have any questions with that. Um, you can also go to the New Readers Press website and click find a rep. Um, we can share a link to that as well. And that way, you know, for everyone across the United States here, you can find your New Readers Press rep that'll help you get started and answer any additional questions that you might have. So that's it for me and the node. Um, I'm gonna pass things back to Sarah here. Um, and we'd be more than happy to stay after um, Sarah comes on to answer any questions, utilize that Q&A in the chat, and we'll be able to answer questions there. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Drew. I am going to share my screen back with you all. Um, okay, so you should now be seeing the Join the Pro Leader Student Learning Upgrade Challenge slide. Um, I just wanted to show this again for the link. I know Vinod has sent it out several times in the chat function, 
Um, if you're interested in joining, uh, fill out the form at the bottom of the page. Um, also on this page, one of the things that you're going to see are some tutorial videos. So some of your students may not have an email address, um, and so we at ProLiteracy created a tutorial video on how to create an email account. Um, and we also created a tutorial video on how to go in and download the Learning Upgrade app and get started. Um, we thought that that was a really important piece and now I'm um, more than ever, I'm glad that we have these available because I think in the remote learning uh, situation that we are all faced with, uh, it's, those tutorials are gonna be very easy for students to you know, look at and hopefully do this through a Zoom with their, with their instructor. Um, or however you're kind of connecting with your students. Um, and they're available on that same page uh, with the, where the form is. So with that said, um, I know we had some questions come in that Vinod has answered um, and through the chat box and through uh, the, the Q&A box. So um, are there any additional questions um, on, on this? Uh, the challenge and, and learning upgrade in general, we're, we have about eight minutes left. Um, Vinod, one of the one of the things that came across in the in the chat box. Oh, okay, you just answered it. Um, the GED reading lessons and and uh, yeah, that's 20, that. Yeah, uh, you know, GED reading. We have GED math and high set math right now. Those have been really popular courses. So what we're looking at is coming out with a GED reading um, in 2021 that covers also the science and social studies so that people get uh, you know, uh, experience, especially a, a visual literacy and things like that. So we have that planned, um, but it's not imminent. It's uh, gonna be next year. Um, also, we had uh, a few questions um, based on um, uh, how students could, uh, I mean, how uh, teachers could sign up uh, their students. Number one question was, if I just have a few students, is that okay? And, that, and it is okay. Uh, and remember that even if you have one student who does really well, they could win the challenge. So there's no minimum amount of students for you to join the challenge. Um, uh, some other questions were um, uh, about content and alignments and things like CASAS and TAPE. And on the NRP website under uh, Learning Upgrade, um, there's links to alignments or correlations to CASAS um, and um, to CCRS. Uh, also placement charts with TABE and CASAS scale scores and NRS EFL levels. So all those documents are up online for you. Great. So we've had a few questions come in. Um, in the in the, the Q and A box, since since we asked, um, the first question is, do we uh, if we don't sign up right now, when does the next enrollment session start? So this challenge will go for four months. Um, I believe the next challenge cycle starts September first, and that will run through the end of the year. Um, but if you're not quite sure, you can sign up and over the course of the next couple of weeks, that will um, you know still still give you plenty of time in this challenge. Um, and then do students need to pass levels with a silver or gold to move to the next grade level? Okay, so that's actually from Jacqueline. Um, mm -hmm. So the way it works is in order to move from, uh, you know, one lesson to the next within a course, they need to get 75% or better. So that's a bronze um, in each lesson. Um, if she's referring to the entire course, so let's say English upgrade one, in order to move on to the next 60 lesson course, then they would need a silver in order to be automatically enrolled into the next one. They need to finish all 60 lessons at a silver, 90% or better to move on. But Jacqueline, as an instructor, you can always enroll them in an additional course. So if you say, hey, I want them to be in the next one right away, you have that option. But yes, in order for a learner to be automatically enrolled into the next one, they would need to get a 90%. And so for Mary Dalma, she says, hey, I have a 30 um, student pilot. How do I get more? 
um, just reach out to us. Again, these aren't limited. I know a lot of you are giving estimates and these numbers change very quickly given our current situation. Feel free to reach out to us. There's no limit on these, these challenge cycle uh, pilots here. So just let us know how many learners you need. Feel free to overestimate. There's no obligation to use the ones that you've asked for and aren't using. Um, but then, yeah, for those of you that have already requested a number, if you need more, just reach out. And Drew, uh, there was a question about uh, how do you determine the student's correct level? And I think sure. what's important there is that there's both a placement um, test, so you could put them into English or math placement, and then we will place them. Or there's a placement chart, which matches up CASAS and TABE scale scores or NRS ESL levels um, to our exact courses. So if you already have those, I'm gonna put up a link to that placement chart right now. And then Lisa, um, I'll get you in touch with our, our rep in Illinois um, and she'll be able to, um, to answer your questions for your state specific requirements there. Um, name's Rebecca Eller um, for New Readers Press. Um, so you can uh, find her at uh, newreaderspress.com and click on find a rep um, or feel free, reach out to me, Drew at learningupgrade.com and I can connect you uh, with your Illinois rep there. So thank you for your question, Lisa. And then Diana, you know, my program is in a renewed pilot. Are we automatically registered in the challenge? So not all, if, if you started on a pilot with New Readers Press or Learning Upgrade, you might not automatically be in the challenge. So fill out the form or reach out to us and let us know you'd like to join the challenge. Um, the, the key there is, you know, for if you already have a Learning Upgrade pilot going, just send me an email, drew at learningupgrade.com. Provide me with your school name and or school ID so I can quickly check. I'll let you know if you're already in the challenge. And then if you're not, I'll make sure you get added. So again, just send me an email, drew at learningupgrade.com and let me know um, the exact, you know, school name, school ID. I'll be able to add you to the challenge if you're not already in there. And then it looks like Dan from New Readers Press. Thank you, Dan. Um, he provided, uh, you know, Rebecca's uh, email address. So for those of you in Illinois, if you have questions, reach out. It's R-E-L-L-E-R -R -E -L -L -E -R at proliteracy.org, and she'll be able to answer any questions that you have for those state-specific questions. Um, and then, John, uh, will the recording of this session be available? Yes, yeah, so for the follow-up email that goes out to all attendees, uh, there will be a link to the recording. So you'll be able to watch this if you jumped on a little bit late and didn't catch it, or if you'd like to share it with a colleague, you'll be able to share that link along. And then do we need to re-enroll for the next challenge? So if you are a purchaser of Learning Upgrade and you are part of the first challenge, you do not need to re-enroll. You'll automatically be carried into the next challenge. Um, if you were on a trial um, and you are applying either to the Mobile Learning Fund or you're interested in purchasing it, you'll need to re-enroll yourself for the next round of the challenge. Yeah, and, and Jacqueline is on an account that does uh, that's an annual. And so Jacqueline, yeah, your, your yes. site is in the challenge. You're good to go. Um, just, yeah, your learners can keep making progress and you're automatically enrolled in the next one. Okay, that brings us to the top of the hour, and it looks like we have answered all of the questions that have come in. Uh, so I would like to thank you all. Uh, thank you, Drew and Vinod, for your time and expertise, and uh, Vinod for the back end um, questions, uh, answering all of the questions and all of that. Um, and then we just got another question. It said the link on the placement chart isn't working. When you get to the page on New Readers Press and click the link, it doesn't take you anywhere. Yeah. Um, okay. So I Deb, what you can do is just brain. go to uh, learningupgrade.com and click on courses. Um, learningupgrade.com courses, we have the same pages and links there. Um, and so if you just go there, you'll see our content areas for English, math, digital literacy. 
um, you'll see all of our placement tables, uh, alignment charts, course lists, um, and then also, yeah, you can also uh, find it on the New Readers Press page as well. So two options, Learning Upgrade, go to Courses, New Readers Press, go to the Learning Upgrade page, and you'll see buttons for those. And uh, Deb, I will look into, um, or I'll have somebody look into the New Readers Press links and make sure that those work. Um, so thank you for, for letting us know that. Um, but with, with that said, I would like to thank you all for your time. And within the next couple of days, you will receive a recording to this webinar. Um, so thank you, thank you all and have a wonderful day. Thank you.